I have installed one piston and now it's time to find top dead center and degree the cam. In reality we're hoping we don't have to degree the cam. We're hoping when we check it it's going to be perfect and we don't have to do anything. Otherwise you're going to have to figure out what all that stuff's for. Now I know this you're not going to like this but these new timing chains there's like 50 different manufacturers and there's all kinds of different styles. This is a Cloy's True Roller blah 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 and it uses a Torrington bearing behind the I mean I don't really need this I just want the old solid stick it on there stock type stuff but life's not that easy. So you're gonna have to and I know you're not gonna like this but you're going to have to read the directions. Now, I know that's not macho, and I know you don't like the idea, and I promise not to tell your wife and your friends, you know, and shame you or something, but these things are so complicated, you have to read the directions. So, it doesn't even tell you how to put it in straight up. It shows you how to advance it and retard it, but I think I've gleaned enough information out of this that what we're supposed to do is stick this zero over the keyway and this zero to line up with the sprocket. I hope that, uh, hope that works. I tried every angle to get the glare off of here, but it's just not working. Okay, here is where we were. This lower set of numbers, that's the zero. And we've got it on the keyway. And there's the zero lined up with the cam sprocket. Okay, so we've got that on zero. Now we've got the top gear. Of course, and here we go again with the directions. With this Torrington bearing, you need to know how that goes. And it says the machined surface, this is stamped on the outside here, the machined surface goes against the sprocket and the outer ray should turn freely. Well, yeah, it does turn freely. So, uh, life must be good, right? Okay, now, by the way, if you're using a stock gear where this is just solid back here, of course you're going to have to oil this. You're going to have metal to metal. I mean you're going to have to oil this up when you put it on. Because there's no oil when you start it here. This is splash lubricated. This is not, you know. So, I will put this top gear and the chain on and uh, put the balancer on and then we will uh, Find our top dead center. You know you have to find top dead center. You, you're you using an aftermarket balancer. You might be using an aftermarket front cover. Uh, your timing tab, you really don't know if it's where it's supposed to be. You, you're going to have to, you have to check this on a, on a, when you're building something up from scratch. And even, even if you were using a stock Hemi balancer, it is 50 years old, and I've never had that outer ring slip, but I've heard of people that have done that. But, uh, so we have to do that. We have to check this out. And I think on that timing cover that I'm using, it doesn't even have a timing tab. We have to put it on there and line it up with top dead center. So I'll put all this together and put the balancer on degree wheel, and let's... Uh, Let's see where we're at. After you've installed the cam, you need to check and make sure that the lobe is right in the center of the lifter hole. I know you think that's automatic, but there are ways to mess that up using the wrong timing chain or missing the thrust bearing or it's not fun when that happens so just check and make sure that's in the middle
all these cam timing events are based on the number one intake lifter and so to test that you put a dial indicator stare at sells this little uh, whatever inch extension that is and you I, I need one about an inch longer I'd like to go right down the middle of the lifter but as normal I have to come off the edge of the lifter here but then you make sure that you're not catching anything and that everything's free to move but all of our measurements are based on this you have to make sure that you're in a pretty straight line okay I've got the timing chain on here now and we need to find top dead center and putting on the degree wheel and getting it right is about the hardest part of this as now you know this this fancy stuff looks nice in a video but you know a, a piece of clothes hanger is easier you can move you can bend it when you need to bend it it's but hey this looks better in a video but this is what this clothes hanger is what I normally use so we have to have a positive stop of course this being a hemi you have a big flat dome up there that comes above the deck so all you have to do is strap a piece of scrap on there or something and makes it a lot easier okay then you have to try to guesstimate where you're at here uh, I think this combination somewhere around 30 is going to get us where we want to be when you come up on uh, the stop you don't want to push too hard you know you might flex the stop so don't try to get crazy okay we're up against the stop this way now let's back uh, and we're at 30 there's 30 now we come all the way around whoops by the way that happens and we're at 32 so you're supposed to loosen this up and set it on about 31 and go the other way you know that that mark doesn't show up very good they're making it a little hard there okay 31 now let's go back the other way I'll tighten it up a little bit and 31 so we're good now I'm gonna back it up a little bit and try to hit it so it won't uh, loosen up on us okay let me test again make sure nothing slipped 31 okay now I'll take off the top dead center strap and uh, we'll check the cam the first thing we'll look for as we go is uh, timing events at 50 thousandths tap at lift we should be 14 degrees before top dead center So we got the dial indicator zeroed coming up we're looking for 50 thousandths taffet lift there we go what row 
Well, we're in a heap of trouble because we're at uh, 17 instead of 14. So, if the intake is going to open at 17 instead of 14, that's earlier. It's going to start opening sooner. Here's 14 over here. We hadn't got there yet. That means that the cam is advanced 3 degrees. That's bad. So, what that means is this is going to turn into a degreeing the cam video instead of a checking the cam video. This is terrible. So, this isn't the number we're really looking for. Let's go where we're really going. On our way to check uh, the lobe lift, we will find the center line of the cam, which is what we're really supposed to be degreeing in. The center line of the number one intake lobe. And that is supposed to be degree intake lobe to 111. That's what we're really looking for here. This is just something to upset you. Oh, on the way, we're going to check the lobe lift, which is supposed to be 360. Now, I know these flat tappet cams don't last long, but surely we hadn't worn it out yet. That's 150, 200. I think we'll stop at 300, and then... Okay, that's 300, and our number, we're at 58, 58. Now we're going to continue to turn at 58, write that down. Now we're going to go to our 360. Or, or go to the whatever the lobe lift is. Eh, looks like you really got a 359 lobe, but that's that's normal. That's not the end of the world. Okay, now we're so our lobe lift is 359. That's another number we just wanted to know for our own information. Now we're going to come back off the other side and come back to zero. Now what we want to know is how many degrees that was. That's going to be our lobe center line. Okay, so now we're at 157. We were at 58. So that's a difference of 99. That means we take 49 and a half off of that, and that is our center line. We know that we're supposed to be a 111, and it's probably not going to be there because the opening event came too soon. The cam is advanced. So let's go 49. Uh, we're at 158, so that's going to be 8, 18, 28, 38, 48, 49 and a half. And we're... We're supposed to be center lined at 111, and instead we're at 108 and a half. So that means that we're going to have to retard the cam. We know it, it's too far advanced because the valve started opening before it was supposed to. It's advanced, so we have to retard it two degrees. I guess that's right. Okay, let me, uh, I think we can, I can take this off and slide this back. Let me get another one of these uh, lower sprockets to show you what we're going to do to it to uh, 
degree they can. If we retard it two degrees, that it'll give us the numbers that we want. Let me go get you a, uh, another sprocket to look at. Okay, here is where we were. This lower set of numbers, that's the zero, and we've got it on the keyway. And there's the zero lined up with the cam sprocket. So, we want to retard. So we're going to go to the minus two, I assume, but, see, but I didn't get any instructions, but okay, we're going to go to minus two and on the lower here over the keyway and then we're going to go to minus two and line that up with the sprocket. Well, that's pretty close, isn't it? And then I'll put the chain back on and we'll try all this over again. Okay, we've retarded it two degrees and now let's check everything over again. Intake is on the rise. Now we'll check our degrees at 50 thousandths lift. 50 thousandths. What is that? About 14 and a half. The card says 14. So 14 and a half. We're happy. No complaints. Now let's check our, uh, what we really want is the center line. We, but we're so close now, that pretty much tells us that two degrees retarded fixed it. But let's go through the motions anyway. Hope that's 200. Now we're going to stop it. 300 and write that number down which is 61 now let's go past max slope lift which was 359 last time and yeah, 58 and a half Come back down. Now we're 50 thousandths off the other side. And the number is 159. And half of 98 is 49. 49 from 159. That's going to put us at 110, isn't it? All right, 49 from 159. 110 lobe separation. You know, we're still off one. But the Mopar Hemi manual says that there's no difference if you're one degree off. So I think we're done degree in the cam. I'll write down what it's installed at on the build sheet so we'll know. Now that it's all over and you've taken this sprocket off for the last time, you can you need to torque this. I use red Loctite. I don't know anybody that's ever had bolts come loose before, but the Mopar Hemi manual says red Loctite, so that's fine. But when you take these bolts out, depending on how you cleaned the cam up, if you clean it with Varsol, there's going to be oil in those threads. So you got to clean out those threads, and you may have had oil on this. You got to clean out the cam bolts, and then you got to clean up you know if you bought brand new ARP bolts for the cam they have rust preventative on them so you got to get that off get everything cleaned up put it together lock tight it torque it